Okay, so in this video we want to look at integrals over functions with more than one variable and we're going to do it by uh, setting up an integral that will give us the volume. So let's say we have this following setup. So we've got a surface here which uh, is given by the equation z equals f of xy and our goal is to find the volume between this surface and the plane z equals zero, which notice that's the xy plane, where x and y are in the rectangle given by a cross b, sorry, a comma b cross c comma d. So here's the picture that we've got going on. So we've got this surface up here, z equals f of xy. Down here in the xy plane, we have the rectangle a to b, and C to D, so that's down here blue in the XY plane, and I've projected it up to this little patch on the surface, um, Z equals F of XY. So in fact, what we're looking for is this volume, which is bound above by this patch and below by the XY plane. Okay, so we're gonna approach this like we did in Calculus 1 by uh, setting up a limit of a Riemann sum, but in this case, the Riemann sum will be over a rectangle and instead of just over an interval. So, I want to focus on the domain of this function, and the domain of this function is two-dimensional, so the domain will be in the xy plane, and what I will do is I'll think about the rectangle a, b, c, d being here, so I'm putting it in the first quadrant, but it could obviously be anywhere. And um, just like from calculus one, I'm gonna split this up into pieces. So I'm gonna say that this is x naught, this is going to be x n, x1 will be right next to x naught, and then here we'll have x i minus one and x i, so that'll be like the i piece. Okay, great, and then we'll do the same thing here. We'll call this y naught. This will be y m, because we might wanna split it up into a different number of subintervals. So right above y naught will be y one, and then somewhere in the middle, we'll have y j minus one and y j. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So that is going to give us the following rectangle in the x, y plane like that. And now um, notice what we're really interested in is just a, a sub portion of that rectangle given by uh, the subinterval xi minus 1 to xi and yj minus 1 to yj. So this is the bit that we are interested in right here. <clears throat> And we'll go, uh, go ahead and call this part right here R-I-J. And just to spell it out, we'll take R-I-J to be equal to X-I minus one X-I cross uh, Y-J minus one Y-J. And now notice what we have is we have our entire rectangle R is the disjoint union. So um, I won't notate in there that it's the disjoint union, but I'll just say it in words. So it's the disjoint union as um, I goes from one, sorry, zero to N, and J goes from zero to M of R, I, J. Okay, great. So let's see what that's doing. So that's taking the union of these rectangles as we go up and across in this bigger rectangle, which is our major goal. So here I'll darken the edges around our entire rectangle, and then maybe also this bit right here too. Okay, great. So now notice we can approximate the area um, under uh, z equals f of x, y above r, i, j by the following. So it'll be the height of um, this rectangular box. We can approximate it by a rectangular box times the base of that rectangular box. And so that's gonna be given um, in the following way. And I should here say volume not area. So we can maybe call that Vij. So that's going to be approximately equal to 
f of um, x, uh, i, maybe I'm going to put a star here, y, j, I'll put a star here, and then we need the area of this rectangle, so I'll say that this is delta a, and I should say here where um, x, i, star is an element from x, i, minus 1, x, i, y i star is an element from um, y sorry y j star it, j minus one to y j and there are really any elements from those um, sub intervals and then finally delta a is given by this distance here times this dis distance here, which we'll call delta x times delta y, where delta x is equal to y i minus sorry y i minus y i minus one, and then delta y is given by um, y j minus y j minus one, and I said y's there, but I meant x's. Okay, and here we can assume equal subintervals. So equal subintervals. We will assume that. So that is the volume under, uh, sorry, under the surface above one of these rectangles. So I'll go ahead and clean up the board. This portion of the board, I'll leave this bit, and then we'll write down the approximate volume under the whole um, rectangle that we're interested in. Okay, so on the previous board, we uh, argued that this volume above this little sub-rectangle but below the surface was approximately equal to just some value of the function on this sub-rectangle times this differential area component, which is given by this length here times this length here. So in other words, the area of the base. Now, and the smaller these subintervals are, the better of an approximation this is. So now what we can say is the entire volume is going to be approximately equal to the sum um, as i goes between 0 and 1 and j goes between 0 and m of v i j. Great. So in other words, that's going to be equal to the sum as j goes from 0 to m, sorry, 1, 1 to m. So we have j equals 1 to m. The sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of x i star y j star delta a. Okay, so we've got something like that. And so this is called uh, the Riemann sum for the volume. Okay, so now the next thing that we can do is we can apply a limit to, to, to this to get the exact value of the volume. So let's go ahead and do that. So we will have this exact value of volume will be the limit as um, m goes to infinity and then the limit as n goes to infinity, so we've got two limits there, and now we have the sum as j goes from 1 to m, and then the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of x i star y j star, and now I'm going to write delta x delta y, like that. Okay, great. But now I'm going to uh, move some things around a little bit and notice that this is going to be equal to the limit as m goes to infinity of the sum j equals 1 to m times delta y and then inside that big operator is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum i equals 1 to n of f of x i star y j star um, times delta x. Great. 
But now, from calculus one, notice that this bit in here is exactly the integral as x goes from a to b um, of that function, where we're considering y to be a constant. So we can write that in there. So now we have the limit as m goes to infinity of the sum j equals 1 to m of delta y times, now we have the integral from a to b of f of x y j star delta x. Great. Well, notice those y j stars are just numbers. Okay, good. So now this is a good place to stop from this board. I'll bring it to the top and then we can finish it off. On the previous board, we had applied calculus one to the inner limit and sum, and now we're ready to do it to the outer limit and sum. So let's see where we are. We have the volume. Recall, this is the volume under this blue patch, but above this blue patch. This volume is going to be the limit as m goes to infinity. So that's the number of y sub intervals. The sum over all of the y sub intervals, so j equals one to m. And now inside of that, we have this big function and now notice this big function is a function of y now because we've integrated out the x dependence. So that x integral is just going to give us a number for all of the x part but then we have a variable y. So maybe we could call this thing a function g of y uh, j star if you wanted to. Okay, great. But that's going to allow us to apply calculus one again on that inner part. In other words, we can combine this sum and this limit together to turn that into an integral. So we'll have the following. So this will be the limit as a uh, Sorry, this will be the integral from C to D, because remember that's what's happening along our Y um, component, of the integral from A to B of F of X comma Y um, DX DY. And now you might say, well, is there anything special as to doing the integral in this order instead of the other order, and there isn't, and that's called Fubini's theorem. And in fact, um, we could have performed this strategy exactly in the opposite order, and we would have gotten the integral from A to B, the integral from C to D of f of x, y, d, y, d, x. And in fact, often this is written as one piece as a double integral over this rectangle, and we could have written that in the following way. So we have a double integral over the rectangle a comma b cross c comma d of f of x y d a where that dA is like some sort of differential area component. So now let's look at all of these. All of these guys will give you the volume, but they give it to you in a slightly different way. You think about this way of writing at writing it as you have one operator. You have this double integral operator. But these two are iterated integrals. So here you're doing a y integral on the inside and an x integral on the outside. And then here you're doing an x integral on the inside and a y integral on the outside. Okay, great. I think this is a good place to end this video. In a forthcoming video, we will do a bunch of examples of things like this.